Good. Good afternoon. <coughs> right. So uh, yeah, as Simon said, um, I'm going to give you an overview to the project. Um, Simon's already introduced us. We have no names on the presentation. I noticed, but there we go. <coughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to give you an introduction to the the project as a whole. Um, just to situate you in this this image here. Could we, we put the lights off? Is that okay? Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, <coughs> This image here says from Professor Muna Carter's British Adventure. And obviously, this is the Sutton Who helmet, written carefully, uh, skillfully rendered in that. <coughs> um, so, just to kind of set you off with just a bit of a different I idea and approach to British heritage and archaeology. Um, <coughs> so, building on that idea, um, in thinking about the development of this project, how it came to be, our thinking on it. Um, Broadly, it comes out of an idea of <coughs> um, Simon and myself both working in contexts out primarily outside of the UK. Simon's worked in Japan. I've worked in West Africa and the Sahara. Um, so from that experience, we've, we, uh, over time, we've been discussing with colleagues a lot about our experiences. And often people in the UK would say, oh, I never, I never heard of that site, or I never knew about that, or oh, that's interesting. So gradually thinking of how one could... <coughs> how one could bring to bear that kind of global experience, global archaeology, world archaeology, <coughs> how one could bring that to bear on British archaeology. Was there any value in that? Um, what interesting things could one do? Um, and just a little bit of a background, obviously, is, um, Mike Parker-Pearson and Ramil, Ramila Sonina's uh, Stonehenge project, which drew inspiration from thinking about Madagascan <coughs> stone monuments. Um, William Gowland, <coughs> the... Um, father of Japanese archaeology, as he's referred to. Um, prior to working on Stonehenge, he worked on some hundreds of these kofun, or um, Japanese burial mounds in Japan. Uh, so if you're actually thinking about one of our most iconic heritage monuments, Stonehenge, there is a wider and a backstory to that, which has nothing to do in many ways with British archaeology. It's really drawing on a much wider world of <coughs> research and thinking. Um, also, in terms of <coughs> recent developing links between Japan and um, the UK in terms of archaeology, through the Sainsbury Institute, a number of projects have taken place. So um, the Dogu Unearth exhibition was trying to place Japanese figurines within a global perspective, and that linked in including British, um, his, you know, British figurines and also other throughout Europe and kind of world, the, you know, world prehistoric figurines. Um, the Brex Nagawa Exchange Committee, so it's a <coughs> recent <coughs> development between um, the town of Thetford and the region around Thetford in East Anglia and a town in Japan called uh, Nagawa Machi. And various exchanges have taken place between those based around the idea of flint and obsidian. So Thetford is located close to Grimes Graves, the prehistoric flint mine. Nagawa is located at an obsidian mine in Japan. So through that, the thinking was, what, what, what could one do? It almost have this kind of twinning between these two monuments and wider social initiatives around that. Uh, the Sainsbury Institute is also <coughs> working with the University of Tokyo on an exchange program between un undergraduates from Tokyo and the UK and also elsewhere in Europe um, for exchange programs in Britain and in Japan. So field study programs. So that's a bit of a background. Um, so that so <coughs> through these various experiences, Simon and myself, we discussed the possibility of developing a project. And so <coughs> we applied to the AHRC, the Impact and Engagement Funding Scheme, and developing from the Dogu Unearthed project to think <coughs> what we could really do, you know, presenting an idea through this experience, what could we do in terms of British archaeology to bring that kind of global perspective. So we came up <coughs> with this idea, the, the project title, Global Perspectives on British Archaeology, an East Anglian model for positioning our heritage in an international context. So looking at East Anglian archaeology as a case study <coughs> and just thinking about um, the perception of, you know, how one could think about the perception of the past amongst British communities and how that could be informed by international thinking, international perspectives and engaging with those and developing <coughs> also a kind of overall internationalization strategy for British archaeology and heritage. And <coughs> so this is a year-long project that's taken place through this year. And this has involved um, exhibitions, 
and the development of web-based resources and digital resources, and also consultancy with heritage stakeholders <coughs> within the UK. And also we've been developing a research framework for East Anglian archaeology, an internationally engaged research framework. So that's what we've set out to do <coughs> and, again, and the activities. I'm just going to run you th through some of those and then place it in a bit of a bigger perspective. <coughs> so the study area, East Anglia. So we chose this partly because the Sainsbury Institute is located there and there's existing Japanese links, but it's more than that. Um, <coughs> the East Anglian area is archaeologically incredibly rich, but has actually a relatively low international profile when one thinks about the sites in that region. <coughs> but you have a huge range of important sites, as I'll go on to, sh to show. Um, but also, there's a very kind of developed heritage model in the region, a heritage and infrastructure model. So therefore, it makes quite a good kind of think, uh, model to think about, uh, more broadly, British archaeology. Um, and also, importantly, the UK government have, de have identified East Anglia as an area where one needs to actually think about more outward ways of thinking about um, <coughs> social and educational initiatives. Um, so we decided to focus on these six significant sites throughout East Anglia to try to bring these ideas together, to link with these organisations to, to engage these ideas. Um, so <coughs> through time, we went from the Paleolithic right through to the medieval period. So Paleolithic site of Haysborough, um, where the oldest footprints in Northern Europe have been found. Uh, uh, yeah, in Northern Europe, and the oldest archaeological site in Northern Europe. Grimes Gray's prehistoric flint mine. Um, flag fed and must farm, Bronze Age villages, must farm kind of very important recent discoveries. Uh, Case the Roman town, which you'll hear more about. Um, Sutton Hoo Anglo Saxon burial mounds and medieval Norwich. So we, we thought we're going to focus on these sites but also bring them together as a whole. <coughs> and part of the aim being maybe through doing that, one could get a more of a kind of um, a unity of the idea as well, rather than just focusing on individual sites, you could really kind of bring out the bigger idea of the project. Um, <coughs> so what we're seeking to do with these, and this kind of idea of comparative international perspectives. So kind of what does that really mean? What we're trying to, what will we try to actually do with these places? Just give you a couple of examples. This is the <coughs> prehistoric um, flint mines at Grimes Graves. This here is Lynch Knife River in North Dakota. And whenever we showed this to people, they said, oh, that's incredibly similar looking. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> they really are kind of really just really similar types of sites. So just presenting global comparators, saying when you see these sites a lot of the time, you visit Grimes Graves, there's not, there doesn't tend to be much or any of the other sites, there's not much presentation of <coughs> you know, these global comparators. You know, how individually distinct is this site? What kind of, a, what bigger story is this part of internationally? Um, so this idea of integrating East Anglia into the bigger picture, the, the um, Haysborough, Northern Europe's oldest footprints and the oldest archaeological site in Northern Europe. <coughs> um, it is often said the oldest footprints outside of Africa, um, but it's never really conveyed where the oldest footprints are in Africa. So we're actually trying to situate it in that bigger story. <coughs> so presenting Haysborough alongside the world's oldest known footprints at Laetoli in Tanzania. So these, this idea of this making, starting to make these connections. <coughs> um, so we sort of, we sort of uh, develop this, uh, these connections and communicate these within a kind of public program, an events program. Um, starting well throughout the summer, 15th of July, the earliest to the 8th of October. So that took us from the Festival Archaeology Day at Norwich Castle, Heritage Open Days launch set for Ancient Museum, Ancient House Museum. <coughs> and then at the site, so Grimes, Graves, Haysborough, Caister, Sutton New, Flagfen, <coughs> and then a wrap-up event of the forum. So these were linked. These were linked to different organisations. So at, at Sutton Hoo, we're in we're in the National Trust Visitor Centre. We linked up with English Heritage at Grimes Graves, <coughs> and you know the Heritage Open Days Festival Archaeology, trying to bring these ideas into a, a wider existing infrastructure to add on these ideas to that, and see what we could do really. This is an example of one of the tours taking place at Haysborough. And also we here we have our exhibition, which I'm going to tell you a little about, which we travelled with around these different events. <coughs> um, so this is our Archeo Globe. I'm just going to spin it for you. This is our Archeo Globe. <coughs> so we're thinking, how could one try to present these ideas in a more individually 
well, a more distinctive way, rather than just putting up a few panels to <laughs> convey the ideas, we decided to develop an actual globe-shaped exhibition to try to bring these ideas across. <coughs> so we took this around these different events, and this was very successful, because what it did was, it looked so odd and unusual in many ways, <laughs> it drew people to it. So really, in terms of actually physically engaging people with this, it was very important. <coughs> and so, yes, yeah, so we went to each of these um, uh, locations and took part in these various events and linked it to a series of tours as well. Um, so often people would meet at the visitor center, we'd take a tour around the site and then also present um, our globe and <coughs> alongside some digital resources which I'll mention and which Jennifer is going to mention later as well. Um, in terms of the content, as I say, we, so this, the, within this exhibition, we're actually trying to present all of these different sites throughout East Anglia in terms of also their global comparators. So here we're presenting Haysborough alongside the Tanzanian sites where the oldest footprints in the world have been found. So for each of these sites, we have the, we have the East Anglian site and we have the global comparators, <coughs> and then all on the same globe. Um, also digital <coughs> and web-based resources. So we developed a series of anima digital animations using the kind of archival materials related to each of these sites and tying it in with the international sites as well. Um, and Jennifer's going to talk about that a bit in her talk. Um, <coughs> and we've embedded these in this website. So you, if you go on there, you can see all of these digital animations which we you know, purpose made for this project. Um, so a part of the British uh, Global Perspectives website. So this contains, it, this features these animations, it features a lot of material about the sites. And what it's really trying to do is to try to bring everything together because there's a lot of resources out there related to these sites which people don't have access to and they're not sufficiently contextualized often. So we're trying to really bring that together, but also to bring together all the knowledge of the experts who've worked at these places to really give a different bit of you know a different a different kind of view on East Anglian archaeology as well as unifying the material related to each site. And we also have surveys um, embedded within this website. So so to try and get try and get engaged with people to see how they're reacting to these ideas. And we also undertook surveys at the sites themselves. Um, so in terms of public feedback which we got from these surveys, this is our uh, unfolded, this is an origami questionnaire, so it was like one of those, you know, it's like an origami sh uh, folded questionnaire. Um, again, people found that kind of interesting, just trying to think of new ways of engaging people rather than just handing them a sheet of paper and saying, write down your answers. Um, so in terms of people's impressions from this, just a couple of, um, <coughs> so as a whole, in terms of how, how interesting did you find our display was one of our questions. So the blue is very interesting, the red is interesting. Green and purple don't feature. One says okay, the other says dull. So fortunately, with people did find it interesting. Um, and <coughs> of, the, of, um, of the people interviewed, 76% 70, of people interviewed said they'd actually want more information on, on the international significance of British heritage sites. And here's just a couple of quotes from people kind of conveying that. And this is in terms of what types of things people would want to, to, to know more about, m including, for example, more on-site information during a visit. <coughs> and outside the um, individual members of the public um, interviewed, and we've also discussed this with, these heritage with the heritage organizations we work with, including, for example, Sutton Hoo, the National Trust, who are very enthusiastic about these ideas. So we're working, we're working this, a lot of these, this feedback from the public, but also from these heritage organizations into our overall kind of research uh, strategy document at the end, just to kind of convey people's feedback on that. So yes, this idea of internationalizing East Anglian research. So East Ang the, the series East Anglian Archaeology, um, a research framework is periodically developed. I think it's every five years. Um, so we are basically trying to work with that same format to develop an internationalization strategy for East Anglian archaeology. So these, these documents, <coughs> they, they, they're very, very focused on the region and not really, you're never really gaining that global perspective that we're trying to contribute. So that will be quite a different thing. So we're just trying to see how that's going to work. Um, <coughs> and from, you know, from our experiences of discussing with heritage stakeholders, the researchers who have been involved in the site, we've had a very lot of a lot of positive feedback, so it really thinks that is, you know, it's going to be quite well received. 
Um, <coughs> just thinking a bit more broadly, the kind of academic research perspective. So can, just thinking how this sits. Um, I've always found it very interesting to look at the Seijima Institute at the Japanese books on British archaeology and other European archaeology. So this is a book about you know Brit British and Irish megaliths in Japanese. I doubt many of you have read one of those in Japanese. I may be wrong, but it's just it gives you an entirely different look at you know how our heritage might be viewed from the outside. So thinking how might one project that into an academic scenario, you know, <coughs> um, and, uh, and in terms of some of the thinking as well, in terms of British archaeology, we always talk about world archaeology. Is British archaeology not part of world archaeology? Where does it sit? And that includes within departments, <coughs> uh, in terms of disciplines. But where, you know, where does where does British archaeology sit? Is that not world archaeology? <coughs> um, and it's certainly to other to other other people that is world archaeology. So in Japan, British archaeology to them is world archaeology. Um, the thinking about also how this fits into the future of comparative archaeology is what we're trying to, you know, comparators and the baggage that has come with that. Also departmental research agendas. Um, my experience at UCL, for example, I found that British archaeology was not fitting very well with world archaeology and the world archaeology agenda there. That's just my own personal experience of that. Um, <coughs> and also Part of the you know, part of our initial thinking about this project, you know, the potential for overseas-led research projects in the UK. It, as we discuss this, there is very, very, very few research projects on British archaeology led by people from outside the UK, whereas British people go all over the world to pursue their research. So it's just trying to situate it in those kind of broader thinking thoughts. And I had to put this in with a terrible pun, play on words, but uh, global Brexit perspectives. I couldn't help myself especially in light of the December 2017 announcements, <coughs> the new wall-to-wall -wall scheme twinning Hadrian's Wall and the Great Wall of China. Not exactly scale-wise a brilliant twinning, maybe, but, um, but coincidentally, David Cameron's new role is announced in the same month of special dispensation to broker financial deals with China. And this builds upon his previous job and his roles <coughs> yeah, in terms of building alliances in terms of that. So in terms of our, you know, the current political situation, where do we go from here? Where does heritage go? It's international connections. There have been various European twinning projects which have taken place, including uh, uh, Grimes Graves, um, which I mentioned earlier. Um, so how do heritage agencies, how do researchers align themselves with these kind of changing political currents? I just want to kind of really end on that note. And, um, and here is uh, the website address for the project. Um, we have a, a running Twitter um, kind of representation of the project as well. As well, on Facebook, there's a complete record of the various events, including videos of the events. As I said, if you go to the uh, website, you can see all the digital sequences about the project. And Jennifer will talk a bit about those later. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.